Hello dear students, uh, in today's lecture we will talk about elimination reaction. Uh, there are two types of elimination reaction, E1 and E2. So today we will perform E1 el elimination reaction where we will, synthesize, we will synthesize uh, cyclohexane from cyclohexanol and this is an uh, this is a E1 reaction. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So, the, so let's talk about the mechanism. Uh, the first of all, we already performed uh, the SN1 uh, nucleophilic substitution reaction uh, of uh, tertiary butyl alcohol to tertiary butyl chloride. And uh, this is the, uh, the first step of the reaction is uh, similar, um, but the second step is a little bit different because um, <clears throat> and in both of these reactions, some common things are uh, the protonated hydroxyl group and water removed, carbocation formed. So, first uh, question that why cyclohexanol don't give uh, doesn't give the substitution reaction? Why it's, it's it's giving the elimination reaction? All right, it's it's basically the carbocation because the stability of carbocation is required for uh, for, for the elimination reaction and and that's why it's not go for the substitution so this is the reaction uh, first of all we will take cyclohexanol and we will add uh, an acid it can be hydrochloric acid uh, sorry sulfuric acid and phosphoric acid both or both of them can be used it's just need a strong acid so at, for, for the acid catalyzed reaction elimination and after that the uh, water uh, molecule is uh, formed because it it uh, leaves this cyclohexanol uh, because of the acid catalysis and heat so what happens actually uh, you can see for in the cyclohexanol uh, the alpha carbon which carries the leaving group and the beta carbon has hydrogen so if uh, the, the the these two is leaving, uh, this hydrogen is leaving with the leaving group, then definitely it will be formed. It will form an alkene, uh, and and uh, and this is formed. So so the the elimination reaction are very important to the preparation of alkene or alkyne. You can also uh, pre prepare the alkyne from from the elimination reaction. And uh, the term elimination describes the fact that a small molecule uh, is lost or removed during this process. Uh, and one, two, or beta elimination indicates that the atoms are lost come from adjacent carbon atoms. So, in an elimination reaction, a pi bond is formed, and it's, it become from sp3 to sp2, and also we can uh, make it sp or alkyne. Uh, so you can see the leaving group from the alpha carbon and the proton from the beta carbon is leaving and form water. So in this two alpha beta carbon makes a pi bond and makes cyclohexene with a presence of sulfuric acid and heat. So as this reaction is E1, so the this reaction is uh, the reaction rate is depends only on the substrate or uh, you can say not in the product so the rate of the reaction is dependent on only on the substrate and this is a uh, unimolecular reaction of water one so the acid catalyzed uh, dehydration of alcohol to alkene this is the reaction and this reaction is totally independent uh, of the concentration of nucleophile because nucleophile's concentration is not gonna change the reaction rate for sure. Th that, that is why this is a unimolecular reaction and water one. So there are three steps. So in, in the first step, what happens actually uh, the leaving group has a pair of lone lone pair electron and from the acid uh, we have a uh, uh, proton protonated H plus so 
So this electron is giving them and it forms a OH2 because a proton is uh, attached to that. So the first step is protonation of the alcohol group by the acid. Okay. So in the second step, what happens actually? Uh, this um, protonation uh, leaves from this uh, molecule and forms a carbocation. And when leaving, it forms a water. So this step is called water leaving, uh, water leaves uh, forming a secondary carbocation. And this secondary carbocation can stabilized by resonance structure in between them. That's why it's, it's prefer elimination rather than substitution. So in the third step, so as there uh, here is a carbocation, so electron deficiency, and uh, we have an uh, from the acid, uh, we have uh, oxygen and lone pair of electron, and it attracts the proton of the, that uh, carbon, and it attract, uh, attracted to the OH2, and when the proton leaves, these two carbon forms a pi bond, and it becomes the deprotonation of a hydrogen to form the double bond, and the cyclohexene is formed. So there is basically three steps. First step is protonation, second step is water leaving from and, and the form uh, forming carboca carbocation and third step is deprotonation to form a pi bond or alkene. So now we will talk about uh, the procedure uh, from, from, from your textbook. So first clamp a 25 ml round bottom flask to, ring, uh, to a ring stand in the hood and place 5 ml water in the, that round bottom flask. Uh, add 4 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid with swirling. Uh, remember, do not add water to acid, it is dangerous. And add acid to the water. Uh, and be careful because sulfuric acid is extremely corrosive, so handle it um, here. And then, uh, in mi the mixing in step 3 will get hot, so let it be cool to the room temperature. And after that, you add 3 gram. Uh, uh, of cyclohexanol which is 3.2 ml because the density of cyclohexanol is a little bit less than 1 so so um, you add 3 gram of cyclohexanol and slowly to the above mixture and after that add 3 boiling chips to the flask and assemble into the flask uh, the distillation apparatus pictured on the next slide so here is the, is the next slide so how you can um, assemble the, the, the uh, process so first clamp and add 25 ml round bottom flask where you already added water and acid and after that uh, cyclohexanol and then uh, you add a thermometer to measure the temperature of this uh, um, clamp and a distillation head and after that you add a condenser uh, through the vacuum adapter and collector or test tube and definitely uh, and cook cold water will be uh, traveling into the condenser so that the vapor uh, the vapor is uh, being cool and form liquids and collect uh, we can collect it to the in, into the test tube so this is another uh, just an image to the apparatus so after adding the boiling chips heat this 25 ml flask gently to promote distillation and um, continue heating until the residue in the flask just turns black and fumes start evolving so so remember the boiling point of uh, your cyclohexene is uh, around 80 so so you have to uh, you have to heat the round bottom flask to up to 85 to co convert all the cyclohexene from the from the cyclohexanol mixture and after that you will uh, find two layers the upper layer will be your cyclohexene and the lower lower water uh, or uh, aqueous layer should be the, uh, should be contain the water remaining water and with the pipette remove the lower aqueous layer so you will get your cyclohexene like this uh, so this is your cyclohexene uh, so less than dense so it will be upper side of your uh, of your test tube and then uh, add 1 ml of sodium carbonate to neutralize traces of acid it's, uh, it's, it will form uh, some foam so be careful and using the pipette squirting technique wash the cyclohexene with the aqueous sodium carbonate solution
<clears throat> it will neutralize the traces of acid so after that uh, also there may be uh, there might be remaining some water uh, uh, because so so that's why we, we have to remove the water also and for that we will add some sodium carbonate and to and wash again so when adding um, this is the same uh, pipetting technique to clean so to, to remove the water we will add uh, sodium uh, calcium chloride uh, 0.5 gram and just swirl it for 20 minutes so all the water will be absorbed uh, by calcium carbonate and then remove the aqueous layer again and the cyclohexane will be pure more than pure uh, than before so after that point you have to uh, distill it another time uh, you can or you cannot so consult with your TA uh, if you want to um, do a, another distillation to get a pure pure more pure product um, so if you undertake the short part distillation assemble the apparatus shown in the next slide and if you do not want to distill then transfer the dry cyclohexene to a clean dry test tube and uh, calculate the percent of yield so I am just showing you the distillation after after collecting the cyclohexene so um, the, this is the heating well and the dried liquid uh, boiling cheap and, and again you, you have to distill up to you can see that 77 to 83 degrees centigrade uh, you can collect uh, so if there is a great deal of distill between below 77 degree combined fraction and re distill so so this is common so you know that 80 degrees so if you heat up to 85 degrees all of your cyclo, pure cyclohexane will con, uh, will travel to the condenser and you can collect it to the test tube so after that uh, you have to assure that uh, you uh, find the cyclohexene pure cyclohexene so so for that um, testing you have to uh, you can test with uh, so many methods so the unsaturation technique or double bond triple bond technique because uh, the unsaturation means the pi bonds will uh, break and and it will show in your tests that it has a pi bond so this is the unsaturation test so you can uh, test this in both ways like you can use potassium permanganate or you can use the plumin carbon tetrachloride solution so if you if you use um, the potassium permanganate test so the purple color will be lost because of the unsaturation and you can easily uh, show that the purple color will disappear if actually your cyclohexene formed and also you can use the bromine carbon tetrachloride tetra, tetra, tetra test in where um, the loss of bromine color is uh, proving that the product of you has a pi bond and so so you can use both of these two I will show some pictures you can see uh, if you use the main reaction I mean uh, the color will change um, color will disappear mm, and also if you use the uh, permanganate test so brown PPT will formed brown PPT so so you can use one one of these tests to verify that your product is cyclohexene and it has a pi bond so in this uh, laboratory process there is a lot of uh, concern issues with the safety because we use uh, sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid which is very corrosive so it had to be uh, it has to be handled very careful very carefully and uh, one more thing very important never add water to the acid never add water to the acid so and also the acids um, acid can cause severe chemical burns so if uh, uh, if this um, acid is touched any place of your body you have to wash it several times and you have to consult with your instructor and you have to avoid the skin contact with that acid um, also uh, pro it produces the volatile sulfur trioxide uh, which can produce tiny droplets of sulfuric acid on clothing and the cloth will be will have a small holes after washing and cyclohexene your product is also flammable and volatile liquid so take measure to minimize the fire hazards and loss by evaporation 
and you have to use uh, bromine for the unsaturation test if you if you have to so then bromine is extremely hazardous reagent so it can uh, cause a serious damage of your uh, eyes also so and respiratory irritant uh, so so use uh, very carefully and also only in the whole few mode and potassium permanganate if you use potassium permanganate for the unsaturation test then it's also a powerful oxidizing agent and uh, which can cause a chemical burn and skin discolor discoloration so be careful with all of these uh, safety issues uh, and after that uh, you can weight your sample and you can calculate the percent of yield by uh, from the equation because you you uh, find cyclohexane from cyclohexanol so it, you can easily uh, calculate the percent of yield from the molecular weight and mole and uh, the te temperature target range for distillation is showing 77 to 83 degree and if possible you can measure the IR or NMR to uh, confirm your uh, product uh, that it is a uh, cyclohexane so I hope you guys enjoyed today's lecture uh, the formation of cyclohexane uh, from cyclohexanol by uh, elimination reaction or e e1 reaction so bye have a good day